Oh yeah, I'm gonna get every single color here. This is like one of the most elevated food court experiences I've had anywhere in Southern California. Now you can see why this food hall is such a hot spot. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Steve from Rockstar Eater coming to you with another rockin' episode. And today I am out here in Orange County, specifically in the city of Anaheim, because I'm gonna be checking out one of the hottest food halls that you can find in OC. I am here at Anaheim Packing House. This is one of the biggest and best food halls that you're gonna find in Orange County. They have 24 food and drink shops, artisan foods, really nice environment, everything going for it. So stick all the way to the end of this video because you're gonna see a mega food hall tour like no other here at the famous Anaheim Packing House in Anaheim. And also if you're new to this channel, take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell because I post these food and travel videos weekly you don't wanna miss out on. So go ahead, do that right now. And in the meantime, I'm gonna be heading into this packing house. It's my first time here and it looks so wonderful. I am so excited. And before I go in, this is definitely worth mentioning. So the Anaheim Packing House is part of this entire Anaheim Packing District. So you're gonna find about four different buildings on this premises. Each building has their own thing going on, but the main one that I'm at today is the Packing House. And in here, you're gonna find those 24 different food and drink shops. So the Anaheim Packing House has been here since 2014, but the facility itself has quite a history. It used to be a citrus packaging company, which began in 1919. So yes, this property has been here for over a hundred years. And now it is one of the most popular food halls that you can find in OC. Like I said, 24 different food and drink shops, cuisines of all kinds, two stories. Wow, this is a big facility. I think I'm gonna start off with this spot, Le Parfait Paris. And I heard that this is super popular, especially in San Diego. And one of the good things about Le Parfait is that they open up pretty early in the morning, so you could definitely start off and have some nice brunch here. So you could get like the crepes, uh, they got some good crepes here, and then they even have all these sandwiches, and then they have, of course, your coffee, and even gelato, pretty nice. Look at all these crazy desserts they have here. So you got the creme brulee and French pudding, yuzu, lemon tart, as well as some strawberry tart and chocolate mousse. And then you got this stuff right here. Ooh, La Rose, look at the color of that. That looks pretty good. And if you guys like pastries, croissants, they got them here. Everything from the almond croissant, even uh, Nutella cruffin, which is kind of like a muffin croissant hybrid and vanilla New York roll, and got the Applelicious brioche. And uh, yeah, that's the regular croissant right there. You see guys, I came pretty early because they're still so fully stocked of everything. And I'm pretty much gonna get there. Macaroons too. These are some nice, small, colorful macaroons, very bite-sized. This looks like it would be so good to give away as a gift. Look how beautiful this all is, incredible. See, I'm already so super excited about the yuzu and lemon tart. That is my flavor right there. Woo, look at that dome, it looks so cool. But then check this one out. So this one is their cruffin. They call this the Nutella cruffin. So it's like a halfway between a muffin and a croissant. We have the signature, that's the one to the left. It's kind of dark because that is a chocolate flavor. This one, which is the brighter one, is their La Rose. So this one has more of a berry flavor, it looks like. One of the most popular sandwiches, this one is the Le Saint Daniel. It's a croissant, so you see the croissant on top and inside, egg, prosciutto, uh, honey. And the cool thing about this bakery is that they have outdoor seating. So yes, if you want a nice view of the parking lot, as well as the other buildings in the Anaheim Packing District, Thankfully, it's a pretty cool day out here today. I gotta show you this. Look at this macaroon. See, look, 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 oh! That's pretty cool, huh? All right, I'll just eat one and then I'll save the rest. Maybe I'll give some away to friends and relatives later. 
Mmm. Wow, so chewy. If I don't stop here, I'm gonna eat all 10 of these or however many is in here. And I also told you that they have drinks here as well. A lot of coffee drinks. So you could get the creme brulee latte. Mm, it's like a creme brulee flavor. I mean, it's supposed to be. So refreshing. And it's not even that sweet too, which is a good thing. Whoa, yeah, you gotta be careful. So this one, you're gonna kind of get a little bit messy, but you know, you can always cut it up too if you wanted to. Mm. So yolky and uh, the prosciutto, oh, so thin and so full of flavor and not too salty. And the top croissant, so crispy. Do you hear that? Putting it next to my microphone. Yeah, very crispy soft. If you come here around 10 or 11, especially during the weekday, it's not gonna be that busy here. And they have plenty of parking here too. Now I'm not gonna eat all of these desserts because uh, I'm gonna get full if I just try to kill all of these right now. So maybe I'll just sample a, a couple of them and then I'll take the rest to go at home because I can always enjoy this in the comfort of my home later on. Wow, this is like the best thing ever. If you guys are into lemon meringue pie, this is kind of an equivalent. You're really gonna like this one. I really like that lemony sour flavor. What is that thing on top? It tastes so foamy. Almost like eating marshmallow on top. Okay, I love everything about this dessert. I could come back just to eat this one. And like I said, this is a very popular bakery. You're gonna find this in a few different spots in Southern California, especially in the San Diego area. But if you are here in Orange County, they got it here at Anaheim Packing House. Mmm. This is something I wanna eat for like a birthday dessert cake or something. I'm such a berry type of person. And if you guys are too, yeah, this is the top one you gotta order, the rose. It's all good. I mean, there's really no complaints about any of this. If you are into all that, then yeah, you definitely need to make the trip out here just for this one. So now I'm gonna be heading on to my first official lunch spot. So now the heavier foods at Georgia's, which is a restaurant that specializes in soul food. And I heard that this is a very good spot here. You see, they got like the small bites and then they have these big plates. And I heard that their fried chicken is a bestseller. Smothered pork chops, also another bestseller. And uh, yeah, I mean, they got a lot of stuff here. You can even go with like barbecue ribs. Look how Southern this is. They have po' boy here for about 13 to $17. And they got your other sandwiches, everything from grilled chicken to tri-tip sandwiches. Got even your bowls. Whenever you see specialty, that means you probably should get that. Fish and grits, chicken and waffles. Let's see, uh, wow, even a blackened chicken pasta. Ooh, gumbo, that's pretty cool. Georgia's restaurant has been here since 2014, but they also have another location in Long Beach. So if you are more in that direction, you should head on over there. But if you are in Orange County, this is the spot to be. And it looks like they are cooking up some really great, authentic, southern style soul food. I'm always very excited to try this. Here we go with the soul food. I'm gonna give you a tour here, beginning with the complimentary cornbread. And this is something that I always love to get in these types of restaurants. And this one is the chicken and waffle. So they do have the regular fried chicken, but then you can also go the waffle mode, which is always good. And yeah, that's the syrup right over there. And this one is the green fried tomatoes, a very popular Southern dish. And this one is their fried catfish, another signature soul food. And if you get the entrees, it comes with two sides. You got the collard greens as well as some yams. I mean, look at that breading on this thing. That is so, wow, it feels so good. I like it. And it comes with that sauce as well. And if you are into pork chops, their smothered pork chops, which has all of this gravy, is a bestseller here. And with this one, I decided to get mac and cheese and mashed potatoes. Now here's another restaurant that has seating indoor and outdoor. 
but I just want to let you know that if you cannot find seating at a specific restaurant, they have a common seating area inside. So just kind of have your pick on where you want to eat. Mm. Inside is kind of light greenish color. And then the outside, I think that's like a cornmeal breading all around. It's the same one that they use for the catfish. So yeah, this is something you should definitely get here if you want to try something that you don't really try in too many restaurants. All right, this is pretty cool. I think this is the one I should have started out with, the cornbread, okay. Do you guys like this? Because I really do, especially if you put a lot of butter over it. It's like so, ah, it's like you want to eat that every day. Wow, this catfish is so soft. You see, when you pick it up with your fork, it just breaks apart like that. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, I think it's a good thing in many ways. It's very tender, right? Isn't that always a good thing? Mmm. Now I can see why people get it. It's actually really good because I've had catfish before where it doesn't taste as moist, as juicy, but this one does. I think this is by far maybe the best catfish I've had here in Southern California. Oh yeah, it's really that good. See, it comes with your sides too, like your collard greens. And I do recommend that you get veggies or something that's very watery so that it can kind of balance the dryness of the, the breading in the, in the food. So this is a good combination because you don't want to just have everything that's dry, right? It's so well cooked. The meat flavor is on point. I mean, this is like a really good classic collard green. Sweet yams also is the way to go. Tastes just like candy. Almost like sweet potato in some ways. I feel like if there's top three things that you should get in a soul food restaurant, fried chicken is always on the list. But add the waffles in, then you got a pretty killer combination. So they do give you all the syrup. See, just pour generously onto the fried chicken just like that. You, woo! Oh yeah. And by the way, I heard they have some pretty awesome iced teas here. Mmm both sweet and non-sweet. All right. Mmm, so juicy. Now it's up to you whether you wanna pour the syrup on top of it. Some people like the sweetness of it and some people really don't. I mean, I think just the chicken itself tastes great, but the waffles, now see, this is where you definitely could use the syrup. Mmm, very soft. It's like eating a piece of cake. I still like that catfish a lot, but hey, if you're a chicken and waffles fan, I don't think you could go wrong here. Smothered pork chops. And I think this is the first time that I'm having it in a soul food restaurant of any kind. And that gravy I heard is really what makes this pork chop. Now you'll notice that on your entrees, like I said, you get two side dishes. There is a certain art to what kind of side dishes go good with what kind of a dish. So if you don't know, you can always ask the staff to recommend really good side dishes. Bro, I haven't had pork chops in a long time. So yes, it is as thick as a gravy and it kind of has like a bacon type of a flavor to it. So meat flavor basically. You can also take the mashed potatoes and look at that, be creative. Dip it in that gravy. Mmm. So good. Yeah, so don't worry if they don't put any gravy on top of this because the gravy is already all here with the pork chops. Ooh, they also have the mac and cheese. Can't have a meal without this one, right? This is such a complete meal. See, I'm telling you, if you get the right side dishes, with your entrees, you're gonna have a pretty killer meal. So you got the protein and then you have the mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, here at Georgia's, at Anaheim Packing House. I should also mention that Anaheim Packing District is only about a mile or two away from Disneyland. Isn't that so awesome? So if you decide you wanna try some non-Disney food, you know, it's also overpriced, come here instead. I mean, it's not cheap eats, but this is really elevated food. And I'm about to go to another spot behind me now we're gonna switch to Thai food. Oh yeah, white elephant. 
drunken noodles, patsyu, and then you got your curries, soups, and salads. But this is where it gets pretty interesting. So you can actually do this thing where you pick your protein and then you pick your green and your side if you want to kind of make your own bowls, I guess. I think this is the first time I've been to a Thai restaurant in a food hall. And it looks like they have a lot of your classics like Pad Thai noodles and yellow curry. And they have some other specialties here that I'm definitely going to try. But it all looks so good because I always love Thai food. All right, here we go with some Thai food. We got the papaya salad and there's shrimp inside there and you can make it however spicy you want. And then we also have the tom yum soup. So you can also pick your protein of what you want in there, such as chicken or shrimp, pad thai noodles. So this one I put with chicken and this is a very popular Thai dish. You probably have seen it in many Thai restaurants. And that one is the yellow curry with chicken and it does come with white rice because how could you eat this by itself right thai iced tea that is something you always have to have with your food and then this is some sort of a green tea with uh, milk on top like condensed milk and a whole bunch of other milks so you can have something like southern style american food to thai food it just shows the diversity of foods that you can have here at this food hall and many others in southern california I haven't had a tom yum soup in a long time. Oh, it's very sweet. This lemongrass flavor is a characteristic flavor of the tom yum soup. I'm beginning to notice that a lot of the foods here really seems like it could be its own sit down brick and mortar restaurant, like not in a food hall. So it just shows how elevated the dining experience is at Anaheim Packing District. This is really like top quality food. Crunchy. And once again, you can pick your protein with this one too. But I think shrimp is really a good one to choose with this. All right, so here is a very classic Thai dish too. Curry chicken. Wow, that curry sauce is so good. So that's like a yellow curry. It's creamy, it tastes kind of milky, and it's uh, sweet, kind of like a coconut flavor. This one is always like my go-to thing whenever I go to a Thai restaurant. If I don't know what else to get, yellow curry with chicken. I think this is one of the favorite things I've had so far. I mean, Pad Thai is not my go-to Thai dish in a Thai restaurant, but I can enjoy it, especially if it's right in front of me or if a Thai restaurant really recommends it. This is really awesome stuff. You know, it's kind of sweet. There's a lot of crushed peanuts in there. Are uh, kind of on the thin side, like a typical Pad Thai noodles. Well, now this is their biggest attraction at White Elephant. This is their coconut milk fried chicken. That's a whole piece of fried chicken, like a long, big strip. You got your healthy stuff like the greens. Okay, that's a big plus. And some white rice. Look how much fried chicken they give you on this one. <gasps> wow, that's quite something, right? whole big slab. I saw them cook it earlier. All right, let's do this. Chicken is so moist. I think it's some sort of a flour coating. It is pretty thick, but then again, there's a lot of chicken inside. Pour the sauce over it. Makes it a little bit sweet. Ooh, yeah, the veggies are good too. There's blue cheese on top of it. Blue cheese will elevate any salads, burgers. This is pure awesomeness. So like I said, there are two floors. So the bottom floor has more food options. And this time I am gonna be trying some Mexican. Okay, there's this spot called Urbana, which has a lot of great contemporary Mexican foods. You see what variety here. And maybe this is a reason why you should come on Tuesdays because they have their Taco Tuesday, which runs from 4 p.m. to close. See, what a deal, two tacos for $8. And if you guys are into drinks, they do have it here. Everything from the margaritas to micheladas. Oh, it looks like you can really have fun at this spot. 
When you walk in here, you'll see that there's a lot of indoor seating. So this is different than the other food stands at this food hall in that it, you know, there's a lot of seating inside. So it's almost like its own little restaurant here in the bottom floor. So the first one that came out is the enchilada suiza, which is a very popular enchilada dish on the menu. And the plate is extremely hot and that's the reason why I'm not touching it. So this is filled with sauteed garlic butter shrimp topped in salsa verde, the green color, with melted Oaxaca cheese, cream, uh, cilantro, looks very good. Even when I was in Mexico very recently, I did not have a chance to have enchilada there. The salsa verde is pretty spicy, wow. I didn't expect that. It's, it's bursting with flavor. This is, I think, one of the much better enchiladas I've had in a Mexican restaurant. Imagine that here at this food hall. And by the way, look at these tables with these lemons underneath. Isn't that so cool? I don't think I've seen a table design like that. Yeah, those are real lemons, by the way. Okay, so here's my taco sampler. We got the lobster taco. Yeah, I heard it's really good here. Um, it has the avocado, chipotle, aioli, blue corn tortilla. And I think there's uh, actual corn esquite in there too. And the center one, that's the filet mignon. So this one has crispy Oaxaca cheese, caramelized onion, and habanero salsa. And then this one is the gobernador, which is crispy wild shrimp, onion, cabbage, spicy aioli, melted, queso and blue corn tortilla. Oh, I really love that color of that tortilla. I think this is the fanciest quesabiria platter I've seen. So for $22, you get three beef birria tacos. It has Oaxaca cheese, red onion, cilantro, served with consomme, yes. And be sure to dip that taco in plenty of consomme because that really will bring out the flavor. Oh, wow. That's pretty mind-blowing. I feel that consomme works good in anything. Oh yeah, so soothing to your soul. But the taco itself, man, this is one of the most unique birria tacos I think I've ever had. Beef is super tender, it's moist, juicy, really good Oaxacan cheese, blue corn tortilla that's thick and fresh made. So if you guys like Mexican food, don't miss out on Urbana. It's here in this food hall, downstairs. Just come on down and they got you hooked up with all your tacos, with even all your drinks over there. Definitely a home run. So I'm heading back upstairs and now I'm gonna be trying some fish and chips. I heard that this is one of the best ones that you can find in OC here at the Chippy Fish and Grill. All right. Oh yeah, so there's the fish and chips. So you can get one piece, you can get three pieces. If you want a little bit of variety, you can get seafood combo, which comes with calamari, fish, and shrimp. And then they also have these wonderful appetizers. You can get like hush puppies, or you can get these uh, fire wings fried chicken, which I think I'm gonna do. That looks pretty good. So it looks like it's a pretty simple process. They would whip up the batter and then they would dip the seafood inside and they use codfish for their fish and chip, deep fry it. And if it comes out right, it's supposed to be very clean tasting, nice crispiness. Uh, you know, that's what the fish and chips is all about, right? So here we go, starting off with some appetizers. This is what's called their fire wings, which is their version of a fried chicken. Comes with ranch sauce. And this one is their seafood combo. So you get a little bit of everything on this one, such as calamari, big pieces of shrimp, and that codfish, along with a whole bunch of fries underneath. You got the, uh, let's see, malt vinegar and the tartar sauce. The meat is so juicy inside, very moist. But nevertheless, it tastes great. I like the flavor. And the meat in here is so juicy. It kind of reminds me of a meal that I would have when I'm at some sort of a pier, maybe like Santa Monica Pier. Hmm. That calamari is so tender. It's not really that chewy, actually. You could get the fish by itself, but I would recommend 
maybe getting the combo just to kind of change it up a little bit because you could get stuff like shrimp. Wow, that shrimp is so big, so plump. Look how big that piece of fish is. Isn't that crazy? Mmm. Okay, I haven't had too many fish and chips in my life, so I'm not the biggest expert in fish and chips, but this one definitely is a very enjoyable one. It's so crispy, and the batter itself like, has a nice soft crispiness to it. Fish, like I said, is a codfish, which is a typical choice for fish and chips. But all around, as you can see, this is a complete meal. So you got the fries, calamari, the fish, not the healthiest thing in this food court, I do admit. But hey, if you love fish and chips, then yeah, you should definitely get it here. And plus, they have counter seating here. How so fun is it? And if you guys like pizza, they do have pizza here as well. But this pizza is pretty unique because this is Roman-style pizza. The type of pizza that you'll find if you go to Rome, Italy. So yes, you're going to get a very authentic pizza here that you're not going to find in too many parts of Southern California. So this is Zero Zero Pizzeria, and I heard that they just opened up here very, very recently. So I think this is the newest spot here at Anaheim Packing House. So those are all their pizza flavors. They sell them by the slice, or you can get, I guess, a whole pie. So if you decide to get them by the slices, here it is. So you can order it, and then they'll heat it up for you. You see they have a lot of the American pizza choices, like pepperoni, to even their specialties, like truffle, Porcini, their famous Zero Zero Pizza, which I heard is kind of spicy. That's cool. And if you guys happen to like Hawaiian, you know, with the pineapple and ham, they got it here too for you. I'm gonna get this truffle one. You see, so they would cut it up for you and that's a slice right there. So they would heat it up just like that in the oven for how many minutes? Uh, one minute. One minute, that's it. Only one minute. I don't know if I've ever had a Roman style pizza before. I mean, I've never been to Rome, Italy before, and I don't think I've had it here in Southern California. So this is gonna be pretty fun. And they have easily like over a dozen selections. So so many you can choose from, just like choosing ice cream, right? And it's worth noting that their desserts like the tiramisu and the cannoli is all made here fresh every morning. So it's worth getting here. Oh yes, even gluten-free options. So here's my pizza by the slice. I decided to get two very popular ones. The left one is the Zero Zero, which has the homemade tomato sauce, mozzarella, uh, spicy Italian salami, goat cheese, and jalapenos. And this one is the truffle one, which has the mushrooms, mozzarella, white truffle oil, and parsley. It's kind of hard to find this place because like I said, it's downstairs and it's all the way to the end. So you could very easily miss this but you shouldn't because this is brand new and they offer really one of the most unique pizzas you'll find anywhere around. The shape of the dough is very unique. So it's not like circular pizza, triangle cut. It's cut into squares. So I guess in some ways it's kind of like a Chicago thin crust pizza. So this pizza is definitely thicker and brightier than a Neapolitan pizza. Not as thick as a Chicago style pizza. Kind of crispy in the bottom. And I love the flavor on top because that tomato sauce, they were right, it is a little bit spicy. But not too bad though. Not like going to a Thai restaurant spicy. This one I'm super excited about. Anytime you smell truffle in a pizza or anything, you know you're gonna be eating a pretty fancy food. Bro. This pizza is amazing. You put truffle oil on anything, it's gonna taste so good. Mushroom, tastes just like sauteed mushrooms. I can't really describe the flavor of that dough. I mean, it's really not that salty of a dough. It's very fluffy, kind of spongy, but just a little crispy on the bottom. So I decided to get another one because this came out fresh from the oven. This is the mortadella which is fresh mozzarella, mortadella, which is the meat, which kind of tastes like ham, 
uh, pistachios and balsamic glaze. And just to let you know, if you order one slice, this is how it looks like when it comes out in that one box. And they look so good. I mean, have you ever seen a pizza that looks like this before? Mmm. <laughs> I can't quite describe what a mortadella tastes like. So it is kind of like ham, but it doesn't taste as salty as a typical American ham. Additions of the pistachio on top, so brilliant. And there is cheese, mozzarella cheese with the pistachio. Adds beautiful crunch to the whole thing. This is really one of the most fascinating pizzas I've had anywhere in Southern California. So no, this is not gonna be like your typical Domino's Pizza. This is like real pizza from Italy, as close as it gets. I have to try their tiramisu here as well because this is fresh made in-house. And this is so popular that I heard it sells out very quickly sometimes in a day. Wow, wow, wow. That is like the creamiest tiramisu I've had. It's almost like eating whipped cream in some ways. Oh, what a good way to finish out. So yeah, when you come here, get the pizza, but also get the tiramisu because like I said, this is so popular that it sells out so quickly and I can see why. So guys, this is Niku right here. He's the owner and amazing chef at Zero Zero. So when you come to this place, tell him you saw this episode and he's gonna be so happy. He's gonna take very good care of you, right? We are here for you. All right, awesome. I'm getting full guys, but there is one more spot that I wanted to check out and this is pretty much dessert time. And I've had dessert already quite a few times here at Pop Bar, which specializes in gelato bars, like gelato on a stick. So this is how it works. So you pick your pop without any of the toppings, it's 450, but then once you start adding the toppings, that's when it's gonna go to like five or 550. They also have some shakes here as well, like frozen hot chocolate, gelato shake, frozen lemonade, Look at that, they look like ice cream bars, right? But these are gelato bars. You got everything from hazelnut, strawberry, green tea, mango, coconut, pineapple, cookies and cream, dulce de leche, peach, Vietnamese coffee, taro. Wow, that pistachio must be so popular because it's almost gone. Mixed berries, vanilla, and chocolate. So this is the fun of the concept, which I've never seen before. I think it's pretty cool. So you choose your toppings. It could be any of that. And then step two, you could dip it full dip, half dip, or you could do a drizzle. And then you choose your toppings. Okay, I guess these are all your toppings. You see you got almond, pistachio, hazelnut, waffle cone, and even this colorful stuff like rainbow sprinkles, chocolate sprinkles. So mine is the Ferrero. You see they dip it into that chocolate and then they dip it into that, dip it into the chocolate one more time. Okay, I think it's done. Seriously, you could be here all day. It does open till nighttime, so you have so many things you could choose from, whether you wanna come for lunch or dinner, and they got even creative desserts like this. This is like the most loaded popsicle stick of an ice cream I've ever had before. First ever time having gelato on a stick. So it's just like it sounds. So it's the ice cream that's dipped into chocolate with a lot of almonds on it. And you can customize it however way you want or you can do their recommendation. Do they even have these things in Italy? Now, like I said, there are about 24 shops here at Anaheim Packing House. So you're not gonna be able to finish it all in one day. But these are some of the hot spots that you can eat at if you wanna make your first trip to Anaheim Packing House in Anaheim. And like I said, very close to Disneyland. So make the trip together here at this super fun place. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this episode, guys. You know what to do. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next food adventure.